AI, I think right now, of course, is the, the word that is in the mouths of everyone, especially any business and any industry or sector are more and more um, dependent, at least of what is going to come out of this, because it's still in the early days, at least in terms of mainstream adoption. So IBM was one of the first uh, um, from, well, the creator of the Watson, which was probably in terms of mainstream perception of AI and machines was probably the first company in the world that led that. So at the moment, uh, in terms of the, the present, uh, um, you mentioned um, Watson AI or Watson X, uh, which serves a lot of different uh, solutions. So in terms of the AI for business across industries, what are the, some concrete examples of how yeah. IBM AI solutions have been instrumental or case studies in helping companies enhance their operations, drive innovation and stay competitive? Yeah, so I, I mean, there, there are three that come to mind and two are fairly public and, 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 and they're all different different in nature. So, I mean, the first public one, are some of the things we've done at Wimbledon and the US Open um, and uh, coming up the, the Masters, um, which actually uh, in tennis and, and golf, um, which I think really in, illustrate and correlate with things that enterprises are trying to do, but show our innovation. So one of the most interesting and exciting ones is we took, our, our, you know, um, the outside courts at Wimbledon and produced AI commentary. So we took the movement of the, the players on the pitch, generated uh, actually voice commentary, uh, with annotated notes for highlights, um, and that's quite groundbreaking in its nature. Is is you know in terms of two two models working together to produce that output. Uh, another thing we did at Wimbledon, which also reflects something that that many organisations are doing, is uh, we we actually predicted uh, or produced some uh, capability to predict the pathway that players would take through through the draw. So, you know, if one player beat another, what would that mean for them in the draw and the other people they would meet? And that's very much predictive in nature, but um, and, and quite interesting to look, look at in the context of many organizations. Uh, another area that I think is, is really um, talks to the way IBM works within the context of the world is the work we've done with NASA recently. So we were the first people to ever take um, the NASA satellite imagery and um, produce a, a, a model to look at the effects of climate change, things like floodplains, burn scars on the planet. Um, and indeed, the model we created um, actually proved itself to be 15% more accurate than any other model in this space, and actually used half of the tokens to generate it. And we've taken that model and we released it to Hugging Face um, uh, as an open model, but you'll also see us develop it further um, in terms of adding weather uh, weather information to it and other areas, working with you know with NASA and other groups like uh, Nvidia, etc. You know, and it's a really co a, a great collaborative example of very advanced innovation that's coming out of our research team. The third example, I think, that really sort of starts to bring this into reality is. Um, we did some work um, with uh, East and North Hearts NHS Trust. Um, and, and if you think think about um, that organization has some six, six and a half thousand people in it. What we built is um, an AI interface to their HR system. So it enabled you know, their, their employees 24 by seven to ask questions about training, policies, registration, roles, um, all the sorts of things that, that allow um, the organization to run more effectively um, day to day. Now, um, there's some interesting figures around that which you can't relate, but uh, you know, beyond just cost savings, vast amounts of time saving. You can imagine being a nurse you know, on duty in the middle of the night having a query that's worrying you, that's perhaps distracting you even, being able to get whatever cha you know, channel you choose to use, whether that be chat or, or voice, to be able to get an answer um, to a question that's related to you, have that interface understand and uh, understand you uh, and be able to answer that is being a very effective way to, to make the organization more effective and indeed make employ or you know enable uh 
the organization to have happier employees at the end of the day. So that's a very transformative use case, I think, at, at a very real level. Um, and it, it talks to IBM's determination, you know, beyond all the technology that we've talked about, really our focus is, is on outcomes, outcomes that transform organizations. So whenever you talk to someone in IBM, they will always ask you, what outcome are you trying to achieve? It's not about what technology we can deliver. And indeed, a lot of our investment and the thing that we really probably should talk about more is the investment we've made in our client engineering teams. Uh, and they're unusual in the way we go to market because what they do is essentially talk to customers about those outcomes. And we have very defined ways in which we try and highlight those ideas and, and crystallize them into um, in, in, in a way that we can actually build MVPs um, for for the customer. And this is all done on our investment. So it's about trying, instead of saying, here's what's an X or here's a tool, it's about say, looking at an outcome, building something for the customer that is designed for them uh, in four to six weeks that proves or builds on the idea they have that then proves the value of whatever technology we bring to it. And in many cases, it's not just our technology, it's how we augment other vendors' technology to really deliver that outcome. And I think that's a very powerful thing that we do in front of customers, you know, that goes beyond the fact that we're just a technology company. You know, we're prepared to invest in helping customers crystallize their outcomes and deliver it, you know, and illustrating value to them. Um, and this team is a very big team of very talented people, designers, uh, data scientists, engineers, architects, that, that bring all this together in a very effective way within a variety of industries. And we're working in, in lots of companies right now doing just that. Well, it's impressive. And of course, these three cases reflect, well, three major uh, events or organizations. In this case, one of the biggest tennis event or the biggest tennis event in the world, of course, NASA and then NHS. So in terms of the case studies for business, of course, not as big as these ones or not as impactful. Can you share, you mentioned the, the products and the investment you did in creating tools and process how to take this. And I think that's probably one of the things that people are more looking for. It's exactly. because, of course, even ChatGPT, the other day is, is advanced search, uh, <laughs> but it doesn't solve the problems for a business that needs no. to, to solve the problem. So I know that IBM is very focused on these case studies. And of course, all these three is about creating products that actually affect the entire society. So any story or, or two that is exemplified the impact of IBM's AI solutions on, I would say, SMEs or big uh, or medium uh, high-end uh, segments as well that are looking for this? Well, in, indeed, we take take the um, reference I talked to you about in terms of North and East Arts NHS Trust. You know, we, we're, we're, you know, we have some of the bigger implementations of of customer service interfaces, um, you know, within banking, for example, in the UK. Um, so, um, uh, so NatWest Bank, for example, use uh, in their core app, you use that same technology um, to enhance their net, net uh, presenter scores and, and enhance their customer, customer satisfaction. These are all very, uh, uh, very great use cases. But there's also a number of others that we can't talk about that really enhance, you know, internal applications and, and the ways they're working. What I what I'm finding exciting in our interactions through the, the client engineering teams that we're having is it is really the new use cases that are coming on the, the things that are inspiring customers to change the way they work or enhance the way they're they're actually working. Um, you know, generative AI rise, it raises a lot of excitement, but also when you start to crystallize what it can do, it's not, you know, the, the use cases it generates aren't necessarily destinations in themselves. You know, they're part of another process and invariably they're about speeding up a process or augmenting something that a human being is already doing. So actually it becomes critical to understand the outcome and understand that if you speed up that process, what the effect on the rest of the process is, uh, and indeed what's the effect on, 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 on the people who are using that process. So I'm seeing a, a lot of that going on um, within customers. 
Um, when I talk about the governance aspect, um, certainly we're working uh, and have been working with AI with very large organizations um, who have, for example, development environments that don't include IBM products, but are using us to bring their data scientists together, um, bringing their um, various development environments and deployment environments. So I'm thinking about companies like Credit Mutual in France, for example, and the classic example of where we've employed that level that helps them productionize AI without necessarily having to go in and, and say, you have to use our studio to develop your solutions or you know, our, our capabilities to develop them. So th there are a lot of different use cases, um, both technical and non-technical that we see surfacing and some really exciting new ones that are coming along, you know, particularly about bringing you know the intelligence of the organization to bear in front of individuals so you know there's a lot of buzz in the market around retrieval augmented generation um you know uh, the, i think the, the commonality between semantic search and generative ai really um, but we're seeing lots of customer service people uh, and lots of customers saying I, you know i want to bring for example all my engineering documents to bear in front of my engineers so i can support not just the ones that have been there for 30 years but the ones that we're onboarding with you know the best information i can give them within the context of the role they're doing so we're seeing lots of those sorts of use cases arise uh, the other thing we're seeing quite a lot of is generative use cases. So, you know, uh, for example, you can think in retail, there's a lot of um, PIM data um, that, that's, you know, uh, that exists. Um, and indeed, there are quite large departments turning that PIM data into marketing data. Um, and if you look at, look at that process, we can generate that data. Um, automatically um, and, and augment that work so it's a lot speedier and you can see that then is a step to hyper personalization which is a really big thing in the marketplace where actually if we can generate really effective marketing information out of the back end of that that product based product information that the suppliers give it means we could also if we know about you as an individual generate that marketing information for you as an individual so we're seeing lots of different use cases start to surface within this market that are going to be very effective and transformative. But as ever, each case is different. Each set of circumstances is different. And what you know, the components that people already have in place are different. And indeed, the days when you could go and say, well, you just need to rip that out, replace it, have gone. So we're very much around, you know, what do you have already? Also, where where do you plan to go, and how can we augment what you're doing to achieve the goal that you have? And that's that's why we take the client engineering approach in many cases. And, that, and I think this is the narrative that we need to open. And, and I, I, one of the things I've been finding is how we go from the theory to the practice. But how do you take mm. these case studies and apply it to the business, and as well to each <laughs> case, because the dealing um, one sector is slightly different from the other but even inside of the same sector there's a lot of case studies that are different and people really i think at the moment there's so much buzz around this and so much panic at the same time people yeah. forget probably the most important things that is really case studies and really things that can actually make us move forward so it talks to the whole thing between evolution and revolution i think a lot of people are thinking that it, this is going to be revolution it's going to fundamentally change, and it will on some levels fundamentally change things. But I think in many cases, we're talking about Im improving the situation and augmenting what human beings are doing. And, and that will be evolution in nature for a variety of reasons. And it should be evolution. It should be about basically improving their situation, making them more effective, um, making the company more effective as a, as a result of that. So, well. Um, you know, I think, you know, a calm approach, looking at the potential outcomes, proving those outcomes, having KPIs around those outcomes, uh, measuring them, moving them to production and doing the same is going to be critical. A, a colleague of mine is very familiar for saying that uh, AI is like a vegetable. It has a shelf life, it goes off. So you need need to be constantly iterating um, what you're doing. And indeed, that um, Eastern North Hans uh, reference I talked about, you know, very much 
you know, that was developed out of lab services and client engineering approach to developing the solution. What's interesting, actually, when you see some of the feedback for that is part of that process is to take the people who are, are using the system, their feedback to iterate that system constantly. So what are the questions it couldn't ask? What are the things I'd love it to be able to ask? Those types of things. So for me, it's not, it's a situation of constant improvement with AI. It's not an application you put in place and then do a revision of it in 18 months. And hopefully, you know, hopefully that'll keep everyone happy. We're talking about a constantly iterative process here. And the same will be true of generative AI. You know, has it answered the question I wanted to? Did it answer with candor? Did it answer in a way that was positive? Did I, you know, was it accurate enough? All of these things are going to be things that are going to cause us to want to be on top of the way it works day in, day out, and be on top of constant innovation in these areas. Yeah, and this is the biggest uh, challenge we are all facing because in the end of the day, one thing is a, an interface like uh, a chat GPT. The other thing is, like you mentioned, a mm. KPI net score case study for for an healthcare for for a, a given organization. Mm.